Well, we gathered here to uh, commemorate 45 years after the closing of Auschwitz. <coughs> and I want to make two major points, or two main points. One is more on a personal level, on my, my of the moral and political significance of these 45 years. 65 years, sorry, 65 years. Uh, Ruth Bundy, in her very moving words, mentioned the passing away of, of the living witnesses. I think of myself, my father was a Holocaust survivor, not far from the Auschwitz, from Galicia, from Landshut. He passed away 10 years ago. My children, I have three daughters. The oldest, the oldest knew him very well. The youngest doesn't have actually real memories of him. My grandchildren would never meet him. And there is a shift. There is a shift from a live witnessing to memory, to history, where witnessing becomes history. And we ask, at this juncture, at this moment in time, we ask ourselves what that means. And I, I'm talking about one, I would say, worry that I have, uh, an anxiety that I have for my own grandchildren, in some ways for my own children. It is easy to remember destruction. It is easy, in some ways, to remember how we lost. You have, you have horrible pictures of destructions, very powerful images. You have now the plans, you have everything. But it's more difficult to remember what we lost, not only how we lost. Now, I I'm actually want to uh, say, every time I come into the exhibition here, I'm, I want to thank the, 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 the people of Yad Vashem, Avner, and, and all the staff. I come here to the new exhibition. What do you see first, which is very moving? At the wall, right, you see the life. You see the life that was lost, not only how it was lost. And this is something we have to cherish and pass because to show the trains and to show the skeletons and to show the, the horrors. People, there, there is almost a, a, almost a perverse attraction. You, you can pass it away, but the, but the wealth and depth of human life that was lost. You know, in Jewish law, there is a wonderful law about mourning, about avelut. And we are mourners, after all. We are not only people who carry memory. We are mourners. It says the following, a person who doesn't have mourners, a person who dies doesn't have a family. And there are such people. I, I remember there was a case here in a terrorist uh, attack where, where a bus was blown in, in the Megiddo juncture, and there was one person who nobody came to identify for months. He was a person who... Nobody felt that he was missing. And Jewish law says that when there is no family to mourn, the community has to allocate 10 people to see Shiva for him, to, to mourn for him. Because the idea that someone passes away without leaving a trace is the end of the dignity of human beings. And I think for us, I mean for my generation, the ones who have known that life that we lost. Our responsibility is not only to remember or to keep on the memory of how we lost, but what we lost. And what we lost was so rich and, and deep and diversified. Not only, by the way, the Jewish people lost. I think Shlomo Avineri mentioned Europe has lost. And the world has lost. So that's one thing, one challenge that I see 65 years that we face. The other thing, and this was a theme that was mentioned by different speakers before me, and I, uh, I know, we are now, we have now a perspective. We have already 65 years. And we ask ourselves, 
Is there a world before the Holocaust and a world after the Holocaust? Do we, uh, uh, is, it, is this the situation? And I think I, in some respect, I reiterate some of the things that Professor Ravineri mentioned. We, the humanity, us as human beings, us as responsible human beings, we expected the Holocaust to be a watershed. It was such a trauma. It was such a monstrous crime. Humanity should have stopped and looked itself at the mirror and said, how we came to do it? Never again. Right. This is uh, the, the magnitude. And, and by the way, uh, and here uh, Ruth Bondi says as well, there were genocides, there were massacres. Primo Levi, I think, beautifully, when he asked what was different about the Holocaust from all genocides, he said one thing, and I think, I think it was very deep. He said, children and little kids, innocent little kids, were killed by nations in different wars. But it never happened in history that old people were taken from hospitals and old age homes to concentration camps to be killed. The, 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 the zeal of extermina extermination, the, the, the collectivization of, of, and the demonization of the other, that, that, that was of no proportions to anything ever in history. And, and what we have learned is the following, how fragile, how fragile is the value of individual life and life in our life, in our societies. The power of the collective to erase two things. First of all, to erase individual responsibility and consciousness. How, how people can be recruited by, by a collective murderous project with a complete loss of capacity to resist it, though they should, on the one hand, and also how it easy how easy it is to make a group, an other group, into one collective that has to be exterminated. And I, I would say, I, I following, following Shlomo, I think in historical, in historical retrospection, the word never again is not a description, it's not a fact, it's a challenge. Because we have had the killing fields in Cambodia since then, and we have the genocide in Rwanda, and we're having in Darfur, and, and in Europe, in Bosnia. And we have threats today around here uh, for, for the destruction of, 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 of the people of Israel. And as well, we had the Cold War, just at the 50s, where, where the powers of the world had the capacity for complete destruction of humanity. And, and it seems, it seems that this is, if we talk about 65 years after, after Auschwitz, it seems that that fact, that, that human potential for ultimate evil is still there. And not only that, the human indifference facing that type of evil. Uh, I would, I, I, I think this is, as, 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 as a generation that carries that memory, we have to remember that. I want to finish uh, here with something, a, a conversation I had with my father a few years before his death. My father, a survivor who turned, came from an ultra-Orthodox, a-Zionist, anti-Zionist family in, in, in Poland, and became a Zionist after the war. And he said to me always, Remember, we Jews have to assume responsibility for our political fate. And I asked him many times, how, how did you, what's the source of your resilience? I mean, the Jewish people have, have, have shown such, such vitality after the Holocaust. What's the source of it? And he said to me the following, this is something I carry, and I wish I can stand up to that. He said, whenever I was, with all the trouble, there was someone who was in a worse condition than myself. And I did everything that I could to help that someone. That kept me alive. That kept me alive. And I think this is a, this is a memory, this is a challenge that we all have to carry and face 65 years after Auschwitz. Thank you.